Uh, now to our current series, Bounce. Every message in the series is aimed at an, a different element of resilience. Resilience is a word that you'll hear a lot about in self-help books and psychological speech today. It's all about how do you bounce back in times of challenge or stress. In times of challenge or stress, we have the choice of breaking or bouncing. And it's not an accident. It doesn't happen by accident uh, when people are able to thrive through stress and trial. This has been a challenging year. Uh, this is some people, if you look back a year ago today, it feels like it was about five years ago. There's been so many different things that have happened that we've all had to get through. And we're still here. So there's an element of celebration that goes along with that. We're, we're, we're still kicking. Um, but we also don't want to say, you know what, I, I feel like I am less joyful than I was. I'm less hopeful. I'm more stressed. Uh, I feel like I'm coming apart. We, we want to be able to, to say to, to the people in our lives that rely on us that they can count on us and that we're going to be that positive presence. And that takes resilience. And people who follow Jesus should be the most resilient people in the world because he died to set us free. And so we're taking this topic very seriously. And today's topic is specifically uh, geared at, 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 at moodiness. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you know anybody that's moody uh, or if, if this is a little convicting because you tend to be a little bit moody. I think all of us have a natural up and down of mood swing, right? But there are some people for whom mood is off the charts. And people around them just tiptoe around their moods. It's, it's like they're, they're blindfolded and chained to an emotional roller coaster and nobody is in control of the ups and downs. If, if, if it's a good day, everybody around you is, oh, good, so-and-so's in a good mood today. If it's a bad day, it's like, don't go near so-and-so. It's, it's not good. It's not a good day. Either that or people just don't, don't know when they can take you seriously. Yeah, you, you seem happy right now, but in the flash, you could be a grumpy, angry person again, or you were just rude and heart, hurtful a few minutes ago, and now you're chipper. I don't trust you. Uh, so being moody and, and, and just riding that roller coaster can be difficult for our relationships, and it can be difficult to know how to react to someone that seems to be imbalanced or to have the, the, the radical mood swings. Um, so we kind of want to talk today about how to, how to deal with some of those feelings as they come. There's a, there's a song that you've probably heard if you've got children under 14 or 15 that like uh, Frozen. That song that, that, that was so famous after the first Frozen movie, Let It Go, where, it, where the line says, Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Well, now they know. It's like Queen Elsa got so sick, if you know the movie, of trying to please people and conceal her emotions and feelings that eventually she just blew up and now everybody knows. I think there's some real truth to that. If we don't know how to process our emotions, eventually, somehow, they're going to come out. They might come out through anger, anxiety, depression, uh, or, or a, a violent type behavior, moodiness type behavior. So our goal should be to manage them before they come out in a way we don't want. And here's why we know that's important. Uh, I heard about an experiment that was done by uh, psychologists. It was kind of a feelings experiment. And what they had was two different groups. Group A would watch a really disturbing movie scene. It's kind of a weird experiment already. What a bunch of cruel scientists they are. And then after they watched the movie, they were asked to tell someone how they were feeling. They were asked to process their emotions before they conducted a task. Group B watched the same disturbing movie scene, but they were told, conceal, don't feel, don't let it show. <laughs> They were, they were at, told the, the words to the song, Let It Go, where you just don't display any emotion and then do the task. So they both did the same task. They both watched the same scene in the movie. The difference is the first group processed and talked about what they were feeling after watching that disturbing scene. And you know what they found? That the group that talked about the, their negative emotions performed better on the task and had less stress. The group that didn't, didn't perform as well, and they had more stress. So we know that our performance in life and our joy in life is determined in part by how we are able to acknowledge and talk about our negative feelings. Uh, here's a phrase I want to put in your mind today. This is a good phrase to remember. Feel and deal. It's important to feel. It's important to experience feelings, but it's also important to deal with them. In, in the slide that I'm going to put up right now, it, it, this is how most people think it is. It's I have an, there's an act that makes me feel a certain way and a consequence about what I do. So a lot of people 
mistakenly see their reactions or the consequences of their feelings as an action causes a consequence. It's A to C. But if you're saying the alphabet, you know that there's a B in the middle there, right? <laughs> we, we go from A to B to C. And, and, and so there's a belief pattern in the middle. The filter that I use to process what happens to me, the action that goes on around me, the feelings that come to me. And that is what leads to the consequence of my behavior. There is a responsibility that all of us have to manage and handle our thoughts and feelings, good and bad, so that we can never just say, that happened and so I have to do this. That thing caused me to be this way. There's a belief system. There's a process that happens inside of me. And the more I'm aware of it and the more I'm able to, 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 to lead that process in a helpful way, I'm going to have better outcomes in my behavior and my overall well-being. In human life, there's a spectrum of emotions, right? So you look at the kid on the screen here crying that he doesn't get another candy cane, right? Uh, or grown-up kids cry for all kinds of different reasons than, than that. But we all know what it feels like to be on the left side of the spectrum. And hopefully, you know what it feels like to be on the right side of the spectrum, bouncing your way through a good day. Most of the time, we probably spend somewhere in the middle where it's just I'm, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm not particularly giddy about it. I'm cooking meals. I'm sweeping the floor. I'm getting gas. I'm having a game of darts with some friends. I mean, you know, it's, it's good. But, uh, you know, I, I may not be on the extreme. That Life is a spectrum. And, and so here's the thing that is so important about being resilient. We have to get good at feeling bad. We have to be able to go to the extremes of the spectrum and, and find ourselves comfortable being there. Not able to only accept the feelings that are on the far right side of the spectrum. We, gotta be able to, to, we have to be good at feeling bad and good. Because if you're only able to feel good, chances are you're not actually able to enjoy it very long. In other words, if, if I can't do sad, I can't do happy. If I'm not able to embrace the full spectrum of human emotions, if I'm not able to process the emotions that I get, I'm probably not going to be a very happy person. So I want to give three quick tips here on how to feel and deal with these human natural emotions that comes. Number one, uh, it's, it's important to pause, notice, and name them. Don't judge them. Like, I've always struggled with anxiety, and one of the worst things is that that's a problem that feeds on itself. Oh, here, here it comes. Oh, no, i, I got to do something to stop this anxiety. And now I'm nervous about feeling nervous. And then I get nervous about feeling nervous about feeling nervous. And it's like a, it's just a snowball. It's like that night where you try to go to sleep and you're, you're thinking, oh, it's 12.05. Now it's 12.13. Now it's 12.13 and a half. Now it's 12.13 and three quarters. And pretty soon, you're wide awake thinking about why you're not sleeping. Um, you have to give yourself permission to just not be asleep yet and not let it create a snowball. So pausing and noticing and just naming your feelings. Don't judge them. Don't say, I shouldn't be feeling this way. Because guess what? You are. You're feeling this way, right? Second, validate them. If you have a parking validation certificate, you go to the window to pay and they validate your parking in the restaurant and you can have it validated so that you pay less to get out of the parking ramp. Validating means you're here. It's okay. You get credit for being. Just let these feelings exist. When you have a feeling of anger, sometimes we act out of anger because we don't want to feel angry anymore and someone around us has to pay. Maybe it's just the, the golf club in my hand that needs to get thrown into the swamp that needs to pay to, for this anger. There needs to be some sort of sacrifice for this anger to go away. Or this sadness, i got to deal with the sadness right now. I need a chemical. I need, I need something exciting to happen. I need to force something to happen. I need to make someone else feel bad. I, I can't just let this feeling be. But the answer is to actually let it exist, validate it. There it is. I see it. I don't feel good. I'm angry. I'm hurt. Thirdly, this might be the hardest, radically accept them. Let them not just be there, but you're kind of bitter that you have to feel this way. You're bitter that that person made you feel this way. You're bitter that life made you feel this way. You're scared that this is always going to be that way. Radically accept that this feeling exists. I'm going to show you a clip right now of, of clinical psychologist here in Bismarck, Tara File. 
she was giving a speech to uh, medical personnel about how to feel and deal with their emotions, how to, how to validate and accept those emotions. And uh, I was going to try to just present it to you, but I think she says it so well herself that I just want to have, have you listen to her give this example of what it means to accept and radically embrace those emotions. So check this out. Imagine with me for just a moment that you're a bus driver and you're driving along headed in, in a direction that's really, really important to you. You know, perhaps that's toward being a compassionate person, you know, a, a creative healthcare professional or entrepreneur, or simply living a healthy, happy life. As you're driving along, you're inevitably, inevitably going to have to stop on the side of the road and, and allow different passengers on and off your bus. And sometimes those passengers will be very much wanted. They may be joy, excitement, a spouse, a child, a success. And sometimes those passengers will be very much unwanted, a failure, feelings of fear, guilt, a global pandemic. When those passengers try to get on our bus, there are about three ways we can handle them. So option one looks like this. Fear. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, fear's trying to get on my bus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What am I going to do? Oh, crap. OK, bury your head in the sands. <laughs> Panic. <laughs> Clearly not a great option, right? You'll end up stuck on the side of the road probably forever getting nowhere closer to this life that, that really matters to you. So we'll nix that option and, and let's try option number two, which looks like this. Fear, you are not getting on my bus. Off, off. Punch it, scream at it, kick it, do whatever you need to do, but you fight it and you get it off your bus, right? Now, clearly, that's a better option than option number one because it's active. We're doing something about it. We're trying to handle it, fix it, change it. But I think you'll agree with me that with many unwanted passengers in this life, we could potentially end up on the side of the road again forever fighting, not getting a step closer to the life that really matters to us. So when that's not an option, there's really only one other option we have. And that looks like this. Fear. Welcome. Yep, yep, hurry it on up. Take a step back. Yep, there's a seat right back there by Joy and my spouse and my boss and my future hopes and dreams because, yep, we're driving now. Hurry it on up. Right? Keep going. Welcome that passenger, whether it's a person, whether it's a feeling whether it's a circumstance you can't change. The only way to keep going is to welcome it all, to accept it all, radically accept it all on the bus and keep driving. And I'll tell you, resilient people do this well. Resilient people get good at radically accepting all of it, feeling the good, feeling the bad, and continuing on. So think about that. You're the bus driver. Did you know that? You're not just riding on the bus of your emotions. Remember that opening visual where someone is blindfolded and handcuffed to the roller coaster of emotions? What if you see yourself as the driver of your emotional bus? And you open the door and Grumpy wants to get in. And Snotty wants to climb aboard. And Anxiety wants to climb aboard. And Fear. And Hope. And Joy. They all, you know, what a ragtag bunch of emotions. And one by one they get on the bus. You don't want to get out of the driver's seat and, and start fighting outside the bus to tell them to st that they can't get on because you're then not going to be doing your job and driving the bus. So you could fear them, you could fight them, or you could just drive the bus and say, go ahead, get on, it's okay. Or, I, or to use some A acronyms, you could avoid the feelings, just try to suppress and avoid. You could attack them, try to stop them from happening, or you simply could accept them, drive the bus, move forward, say, come on in, I, I acknowledge that you're there. You're part of life, you're part of the natural spectrum of human emotions. Give yourself radical permission to feel anything. Don't try to get out of feeling it, fully embrace and accept that feeling. It sounds counterintuitive because you're like, well, I don't want to feel this way, right? And you will not get rid of that feeling, you'll not be able to deal with that feeling unless you experience that feeling. Name it, talk about it, get help, and keep moving. In our community groups, it's a surprise. If you haven't joined a community group yet, you can text the number on the screen right now. 
701-380-8210, text the word groups. You can, if you're at a distance, if you're outside Bismarck or you'd like to just, for health reasons or whatever, stay home. We have uh, virtual groups that are meeting as well as in-person groups. So wherever you are, there's something for you. We have a group in Washburn that's meeting in that area. So uh, lots of options, but these people will uh, get together once a week, talk about our messages every week, how to apply this stuff to our lives, and really acknowledge the fact that you don't have to drive alone. You don't have to drive the bus alone. You don't have to manage and feel and deal with the things that are going on in your mind and your heart by yourself. You can drive the bus together. And so, yeah, you have to drive. You're in the driver's seat of your life and your emotions, but you don't have to do it alone. Consider who in your life would get together with you every week and talk about this stuff, who would listen to how you're feeling and thinking, the joys and challenges, and that you could be there for each other to just validate. It's okay. That sounds hard. That sounds exciting. That sounds frustrating. That's, that's, if I were you, I'd be frustrated too. Just acknowledge that it's okay to feel. See, as the next visual shows, that, that emotional spectrum again, we have to spend enough time managing those negative thoughts and emotions so that we can fully embrace the positive thoughts and emotions. It's kind of like if you want to feel what it feels like to run across the finish line of the marathon, let's compare that to the positive feeling. Any marathon runner will tell you it is one of the best feelings in the world, running that last mile the crowd on both sides of the road roaring and cheering for you to get across that finish line. I've never heard someone say, you know, I cheated and just drove a car for 25 miles in the last 1.2 miles I ran and it felt great. We don't get to cheat the spectrum of emotions. We're human beings and so we have to spend the time that human beings have to spend managing those negative thoughts that come talking ourselves through them, working on feeling and dealing, not avoiding, not attacking, moving the bus forward. And as we do that, we also learn how to engage and produce positive feelings. So I want to I show that, that it's not just focusing on your negative thoughts and feelings. There is a, there's a way of acknowledging, feeling, dealing, and then moving forward to positive. And here's, here's how that looks. First, the feel part of that is, is the validation that we've been talking about. Uh, let's just say that you have been really kind to one of your coworkers, and you've discovered that he has been gossiping about you or a fellow student who you thought was one of your good friends and now that you've learned what they've been saying behind your back. That feeling comes. The tension in your chest rises. The anger happens. The depression uh, comes up. You could hide and try to just erase all that or try to get your mind off and it seems to be getting worse and worse. Or you could simply talk to someone you trust and look yourself in the mirror and say, I am angry that he gossiped about me. It really hurts. Name it. It's true. It's real. Don't pretend it's not. But don't stay there. Once you've acknowledged, once you've invited it to sit down on your bus, you close the door and you keep moving, as Dr. File said, so that you can deal. And deal looks like pointing yourself to the silver lining. There's always, always a silver lining when you're a follower of Jesus. So you can say to yourself, I'm angry that he talks about me. It really hurts. Then you can say, but he does not define me. Whatever he says to me doesn't define, about me doesn't define me. I can talk to this person about that. I can ask them to stop. I have friends and family that never treat me that way, that would never do that to me. So even when someone that that I work with does treat me poorly, there are lots of people in my life who don't. You see what you're doing. You're acknowledging that it hurts, but you're also turning your mind to the silver lining, which is it doesn't define me, it's not going to stop me, and I have friends and family who don't. I can deal with that to a certain degree, but I can't control his behavior. So you validate the emotion, and then once you do that, you can move to the silver lining. This is a very biblical pattern, by the way. I want to show you a, a part of the Bible in the book of Lamentations, if you're ever not sure that it's okay to complain and be frustrated to God, just remember that there's a book in the Bible called Lamentations. I mean, it's almost impossible to say without weeping, you know, Lamentations, the book of Lamentations. It's a book in the Bible. And I tell you what, if, you, if you're in a good mood, don't start reading Lamentations because it'll ruin your day. The first two and a half chapters are just like, oh, 
I remember when I felt this way and I, I didn't want to go there again today. It's a person whose life is an utter ruin. Everything has gone wrong. Everything has been awful. And for some reason, this person, as many other cases show in the Bible, is totally comfortable saying these things in prayer to God. God is not afraid of us validating our negative emotions and doubts and fears in prayer to him. And the scriptures give us all kinds of examples of where that happens. So this person gets to the end of his lament. He says, I have been deprived of peace. Look at the, the words I've highlighted in yellow. I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say, my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped for from, uh, hope from the Lord. I remember my affliction. I remember it. And my wandering, my bitterness and the gall, I well remember them. And how's this for an ultimate statement of feeling? My soul is downcast within me. Brutal self-analysis, brutal honesty. Sometimes you've got to hit that bottom to be able to go back up. And if you just tread water without letting yourself sink into the emotion, you end up sinking anyway. So that's the validation. That's the feeling. Now watch the, the, the author pivot away and deal. Now that he's acknowledged and felt it and acknowledged it and validated it and accepted it before God, now he's able to pivot to the silver lining and deal with it. He says, yet, this I call to mind. Notice the aggressive, proactive movement. I am grabbing hold of this and I'm pulling it into my brain. I'm calling it to mind. And therefore, I have hope. There is a silver lining and I am going to acknowledge it. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. People fail me all the time, but God will never fail me. Silver lining. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, another, I'm reminding myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. All of this is just promise after promise after promise. Silver lining galore. It's going to be okay. This is real, but it will not win the day. I will not be consumed by this problem because God's compassion never fails. Sounds like a worship song waiting to be written. You see, we can't fully experience positive emotions unless we learn how to embrace the negative ones. Have you ever seen an up without a down, a left without a right? Well, redemption and healing happen after difficult things happen. So if, if you want to experience God's saving, healing, forgiving power, you're going to have to turn into those things and feel those things that need his restoring hand of, of, of joy and love to come into your life. I want to show you one more passage of scripture as we close here. Psalm 22. My God, listen to the man who wrote this psalm speaking for all of us at, some, at one of the worst moments of his life. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. This is a psalm that was written hundreds of years before God became a human being named Jesus and lived his life as a teacher and a wanderer. And then he was, he was crucified, he was executed because he threatened the powers that be. You know what he said on the cross, one of his final words? It's going to look familiar. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When his mind was starting to go to waste and his body was going to waste, he recalled the words of Psalm 22. He was reciting scripture that spoke into a situation about a man who was forsaken, who felt forsaken by his God. And of course, Jesus was anything but forsaken, just like you and I are anything but forsaken in our difficult times and lows. But it's okay to acknowledge the feeling. If Jesus did, it's okay for you and I to. 
If Jesus talked about it out loud, if Jesus wasn't too tough, too manly, too proud to call it out before people, some of which cared about him and some of which hated his guts, you can do it too. Have you been a person that just tends to bottle things up? That doesn't think you're worthy of being known and heard by others? That tries to conceal, not feel, don't let them know what's going to come out at some point? Why not do it with people who care about you? Why not do it before God? This was the uh, darkest day of, of Jesus' life. But it also became one of the most beautiful moments in human history because of what happened a couple days later. This was God's ultimate silver lining. Jesus, the abandoned one on the cross, who entered into the deepest form of human pain and misery, felt it, dealt with it, and acknowledged it so fully that he died with it. And he gave us permission to be there ourselves by entering into that place of despair and death. He, he was able to meet any time, anyone who finds himself in that same place in life. Not even there are you alone. Jesus Christ stood right in those shoes. He felt that pain. He felt that hurt. He felt that despair. He didn't stop there. He was able even then and there to bring about a silver lining. See, the empty tomb has got ultimate silver lining. The good news of Jesus Christ, the death and resurrection of God made flesh is God's eternal response to bad news. There is always, when you know Jesus, there is always a silver lining. It's not Pollyannish, just cockeyed optimism to look for the silver lining in life. Jesus Christ died so that you and I would always have silver lining. We could always feel and acknowledge the worst that life had to offer and then we could pivot away from that, not hide from it, not run from it, but pivot away from that and say the bus is moving forward, the empty tomb is a reality, and I am going to find and hope and look forward to the deliverance of God in my life now and in the life to come. I don't know about you, but I needed that this week. I needed to be reminded that it's okay to hurt, it's okay to be frustrated, and it's okay to look to God as the one whose good news, gospel of Jesus Christ, is the eternal response to any bad news we face. Thanks for joining us today. Let's pray as we close, and we'll see you back here next week. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus means good news. That Jesus means bad news is okay, and good news is always around the corner. Help us to feel and deal. To give us ourselves permission to feel and to, to give ourselves permission to enter into the pain of others and validate and accept them and their emotions. Walk us, Jesus, to the silver lining so that we can be Easter people, but not people who can't acknowledge the hard things in life, people who acknowledge them so fully that the good things in life become all the more good and the resurrection becomes all the more glorious. Help us bounce in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.